What's going on, Raider Nation? It's True Raider coming at you with another video. Now, right now, there is no market for Justin Fields. And I got to tell you guys, man, I am not a big Justin Fields guy. Uh, I am really, I'm not really super convinced that he is the answer for the Raiders moving forward for starter. Now, the reason I'm saying go and get Justin Fields is because he has no market value, which means that we're going to be able to pick him up for cheap. So I've been watching a couple of different shows, and what they're talking about right now is that Fields is kind of having the whole Trey Lance thing going on, right? Which means that he's looking at being able to be moved for either a fourth-round pick, a fifth-round pick. Hell, one, one person was even talking about a sixth-round pick, right? And what I'm looking at is if we can pick up Justin Fields that late, uh, I mean, for that late of co uh, draft compensation, then why not go and get him? Now, I don't really consider Fields to be much of an upgrade from Garner Minshew, right? But right now, what we're looking at is we have Garner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. They're in this position where they're kind of pitted against each other in order to battle for that starting position. Now, I do like that. However, I don't think that that's our solution for a starting quarterback for this upcoming year. Now, if you take... Uh, Justin Fields for a later round pick, maybe a fourth or a fifth or a sixth or maybe a fifth and a sixth, something like that, and go ahead and bring him on. Then all of a sudden we have Justin Fields, Garner Minshew, and Aiden O'Connell. Now, that doesn't mean that we're out of the talks for maybe moving up to pick up a quarterback in the draft, right? But what that means is that we kind of have a security blanket, so to speak. So what we're looking at right now is, uh, you know, Justin Fields doesn't have anywhere to land that he could be a starter, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious that, you know, the Bears are going to move on from him. Uh, the Commanders have the second overall pick, and it's not really looking like they're very interested in Justin Fields. The Patriots moved on from Mac Jones, but they have the third overall pick. Uh, other teams are looking at a quarterback, like the Vikings just signed Sam Darnold, but I don't really think that that's their solution. I don't think they're really looking for Justin Fields. Uh, and what we're looking at is all the teams that the Bears thought they were going to be able to trade Justin Fields to are just kind of falling off the map. Now, when we go into the draft, it is still possible that we might just move heaven and earth to be able to move up to one of those top positions and get our guy, right? So let's say we do pick up a Justin Fields and we're sitting on these three quarterbacks. What can happen is if we're putting draft picks together in order to move up, we could package one of these quarterbacks in the deal. Whether it's Justin Fields, Gardner Minshew, or Aiden O'Connell, it doesn't really matter. We could throw one of them in as – some kind of compensation with draft picks, right? To be able to free up another quarterback space so we could bring in who we're going to draft. But let's say we get, you know, to draft day and, you know, all of a sudden what we're looking at is we're not being able to move up and any of the quarterbacks that we're even considering are off the board right away. And there we are at pick 13 and we're thinking, man, we're screwed. Well, if we're sitting there with Justin Fields, Gardner Minshew, and Aiden O'Connell, and they're put in a position where the three of them can kind of battle it out and see who's going to be the starter. Honestly, I think Justin Fields would probably win that job. Uh, but, you know, you, it never hurts to have good competition in, in the quarterback room, right? And so if we're in a position where all of a sudden we have three pretty good, decent quarterbacks already in our quarterback room, at pick 13, who knows? We could move back. We could pick up extra draft compensation, maybe get an extra second or third. Um, or we get put in a position where we're drafting a corner or an offensive tackle or something like that at pick number 13. And I got to tell you guys, man, I really like the idea of that because, you know, the more I think about it, the more I it's going to be worth picking up Justin Fields. Even if it turns out that, it's not somebody that we keep on our roster or, you know, he ends up being the backup and Garner Minshew ends up getting moved or, you know, whatever that ends up looking like, I think it's worth going and getting and getting him right now because what's going to happen is Chicago is going to realize in the next coming days that they don't have any suitors for him. They don't have a market for him. 
And so they might decide we're going to go ahead and hold on to him. Now, if the Bears hold on to Justin Fields and they draft Caleb Williams, that's going to make for a very awkward, you know, locker room. I, you know, and they the whole thing with Jimmy G when they drafted Trey Lance and, you know, teams have done this, right? I don't see the Bears being in a position where they really want to do that. But if they realize we don't have, you know, a market for him, we're not going to get anything for him, they might decide that they're going to hold on to him and just see what happens in the draft. You know, and they're going to see what teams end up being in a in a kind of a spot of desperation where they thought they were going to be able to draft their guy for QB and turns out their guy was no longer available. And there they are sitting, you know, uh, we're waiting for the second round. And they're going, damn, I, sh- I should have picked up Justin Fields, right? And all of a sudden, the Bears are going to say, well, we just upped the price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. And so if we wait too long, his price, you know, the market for him might actually grow, right? So I think right now is the time to strike, the time to jump up and get him, you know, while the price is going to be they're kind of looking at just trying to get rid of him, uh, you know, and it might not even be during the draft that they decided to get rid of him, right? They could hold on to him and kind of stash him away and then come, you know, first couple of weeks of the season, let's say somebody's quarterback gets hurt. Well, all of a sudden his value just went up, right? And then they're going to be charging more for Justin Fields. And I don't want to be in the position where we mess out in the draft and we don't get to draft one of the guys that we really, you know, that that AP and Tom Telesco actually think is going to be worth drafting. And then we get down into the season and we're looking at Garner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell and saying, damn, man, I really wish that we had another option. And then being in a position where we're the ones that are paying a higher price for Justin Fields later on down the line. Or it could be that, you know, we can't move up from number 13. And, you know, all of a sudden we have Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. It could be that all of those guys go in the top 10. And then we're sitting there with really just, who are we going to draft at that point, right? You know, and there's a couple other decent serviceable QBs out there. You know, Spencer Rattler's a name that keeps getting tossed around. And, you know, it's looking like he's going to be in the later rounds. But, you know, I'm just really thinking that there's a good possibility that we might be that team that ends up paying more for him later than we would today. So why not just go out there and get him today? You know, you guys, let me know what you guys think. Hit me up in the comments, hit that subscribe, and um, I'll see you guys for the next one.